Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission to gather a cadre of writers, thinkers, and teachers who are transforming the world one character at a time. And it all starts with one thing, a deep understanding of human motivation, why people do what they do, and the forces that drive them. To gain that understanding, I am mining the intersection of psychology, theology, and philosophy to make you a better writer. This is episode 97, Zettelkasten, an effortless card numbering system. Okay, I've been on quite a diversion here talking about the Zettelkasten, but it's been prompted largely by the continued interest that you are showing and the questions that you're asking And that is telling me that I have tapped into a vein here of information that people want. So I'm going to go ahead and tackle the card numbering system. And I'm going to show you a method that takes all the guesswork out of it, takes all the worry out of it, lets you think totally about your subject matter and not even have to think hardly anything about the card numbering system at all. But I will talk a little bit about standard card numbering systems and I will also, uh, there are advantages to each one, but I want to give you something that is so simple that if if you're frightened of card numbering or if it's holding you back from working on your Zettelkasten, then maybe this is a plan that will work for you. Let's start though with a review of what we normally see typically see in a card numbering system. The most common type of a card numbering system begins with a four digit number which gives you a basic broad category and then as cards are added in more specific areas additional digits are filled out and there you don't have so many zeros hanging there. This particular system, the most basic outline, is presented by Scott P. Shepper in his book, Antoinette Zettelkasten. Uh, You can get a copy of it on his website, uh, scottshepper.com. And uh, Scott Shepper uses the Wikipedia academic disciplines to establish his numbers. And the academic disciplines will also give you some subtitles to go below the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. This is a very, um, very common system to use in an analog zettel custom because of Scott P. Shepard. He's the one who really made the push for an analog system post Lumen and he's the one who brought this system to light and so um, many many of us use this system. I and myself am um, I learned the zettel custom from Scott Shepard and I've been following him from his earliest days. Here's a picture of the book that you can order. It's quite a beast of a book. Mine isn't handy, but I certainly have one. And if you look closely on the front page of that book, you'll see something maybe a little bit surprising. You'll see me, my name, on the front page of Scott's book. Well. I didn't write the book by any means. I simply um, I gave him an early endorsement because he had posted uh, chapters that he was working on ahead of time and I was one of the people that uh, commented on his early work before it became a book. So what I'm trying to say by all of this is that I have nothing whatsoever against this method that Scott teaches. The only thing that I'm reason I'm presenting another one is because so many people are paralyzed by the numbering system and it just keeps them from actually creating a Zettelkasten and there's no need for that. When it all comes down to the bottom line, the only thing that's really important with a card numbering system is that you have one. And there are basically only three rules of a card numbering system. They're very, very simple. Every card gets a unique number. Uh, You keep a good index so that you can find cards again. And uh, there's an order to the cards such that if you threw your deck on the floor, you'd be able to put it back into order just by what's written on the card. 
So I'm going to provide a system that is as easy as a system could ever possibly be. It's basically a system, let me go past this, where your first category is one, the next category is two, three, four, on up, keep counting however many you want. Every separate category starts out with a different number. The advantage of this is you don't have to think in advance of what are my categories and where would this go and where does this belong. It's simply every, everything that's different gets its own category name. So let's take a look at how this shapes up. Say you have your first card. Your first card, now these are super simplified because I don't want us thinking about what's on the card. I want us thinking about where the cards position with respect to one another and the numbering system itself. So um, that's really all I want you to focus on right now. So our first card, jellyfish are 95% water. Because that's our first card, it obviously gets card number one because we said that our first uh, topic would be the first, determined by the first card. And like every main card that you will ever create, there are some key attributes of this card that should already be familiar to you. Number one, you can see the source. The source, the nickname of the source is always included on every main card in your Zettelkasten. In this one, this is the Marine uh, Conservation Society, R.MCS, and it's um, Fun Facts About Jellyfish, FFJ. So that's a website, and I have a bib card for that, which would take me back to that same website. Okay, so what we now have, since we have our first card, that means we have our first topic, and so here we are, ta-da! We have our first topic. I actually do, if I were, this isn't exactly like my numbering system, but I do use directory cards and I do use colored cards. Not necessarily always um, blue, I've got pink, I've, you know, they just come in a, in a variety pack of colors. And so whichever colors up next, is the color that I would use for my uh, for a directory card. For example, blue. So you could slip this card. This card is not really a part of your Zettelkasten. It shows you can see that by its color, and it's simply a directory card. And uh, so it, this card is simply saying that oh, my first subject is jellyfish. That's not a very forward-thinking um, topic because it's quite narrow, but don't worry about it. This is the effortless system, so it's whatever you think to call it. If you had a card about jellyfish and you immediately thought to call it ocean life, great. Then your topic is ocean life. It's effortless. What, do you, what would you call it? What would you call it is what it's called. I called it jellyfish. So now you get another card. Let's say the next card is a card from the National Geographic for Kids. Uh, and this one is a thousand facts about dinosaurs. And so here's one of their thousand facts about dinosaurs. Uh, pterosaurs were not dinosaurs. They were flying reptiles that appeared in the late Triassic around the same time as the first dinosaurs. Well, well, what card number is this card going to get? Um, is it, here's, it's effortless card numbering system, so it's very, very simple. Is it on the same subject as our first card, or is it on a different subject? Let's take a quick look. The first subject, we said, okay, jellyfish are 95% water. We picked out two key words for our index, jellyfish and water. Down here in our new card, we picked out pterosaurs, dinosaurs, and Triassic. None of those are the same. 
Okay, different. Since it's a different topic, it gets a different number. So it will get card number two because it's on a different subject. So here we are. Now our index that we can put out in the front of our Zettelkasten has two topics, jellyfish and dinosaurs. And we don't need to worry if we, this is a real simple way to teach a child how to start a, a um, Zettelkasten because every time the child thinks of a new topic, it's just a new number and you just put the list in front um, for a, a child, they might not even need an index. This list in front might be all they need to be able to find the topic that they're working on. So it's really, really simplified. But now let's go further because we're not going to just have one card in our uh, Zettelkasten. The Zettelkasten is going to grow. So let's take a look at the next card. The next card is Jellyfish. Again, this is from the Fun Facts About Jellyfish uh, website. Jellyfish don't have brains, hearts, or lungs. They have three layers. Well, same or different? Well, it's the same topic as the first card on jellyfish. Ah, okay. It's the same topic. So that means the number grows. It goes under the first topic. And in this system, it goes number, letter, number, letter, number, letter, number, letter. We'll see as the numbers get longer, we won't get that far today, but we'll see how as the numbers grow, we put some little punctuation in to make them easier to read. So we have our first rule and it's already getting late, so I have to stop here. I thought I'd get a little farther. I have more cards, but no more time. Okay, so if it was the same, you add to the number. If it's different, you go up a number. So now we have three cards. We had we we went up a number for the dinosaurs because it was a different topic. We added an, a letter to the jellyfish because it's on the same topic. And we'll pick up from here tomorrow. Bye-bye.